Hi guys, it's the Black Bonsai Guy. Welcome back for week uh, four. Uh, today we'll continue hunting and shopping for discounted plants. Uh, today I think I'm going to go, you know, play around with all three of the um, tools that I've presented to you guys, whether it be OfferUp, uh, Facebook Marketplace, or Craigslist. And hopefully we'll be able to find some good deals. Let's go. All right, guys, we're back. Today we will be looking for deals on uh, all of our apps. We'll split our time across all of them. Um, we're not going to waste a lot of time. Get straight into it. Uh, let's see. I don't see any plants so far looks like somebody was selling a blue agave cactus i believe that's with uh tequila they make some tequilas from blue agave i know the blue agave is the cactus that sends out that long shoot uh when it's about to die and i really like those uh, but that's so looks like someone has a flowering plant if that fits your taste for 10 bucks you could have it uh, those Guam chilies are still here. Five dollars each. Trying to see if they have anything new that we have not seen yet. Uh, that's a fake cactus. Uh, not really seeing anything in offer up today but it could just be the time of day let's do a search for a plant and see if we find anything that pops up purple shamrock it's not a bad looking plant uh lady slipper plants if you have a, if you want to go for a modern look, I see these things generally used to landscape for the modern look, especially against some type of uh, white backdrop. Terracotta round planter with plants. Oh, don't know who that is. Um. Probably just for the planter alone, that's worth 25 bucks. Those uh, planters can be pretty expensive. Uh, here's a house plant. Oh, it's a plant stand for $25. Uh, let's see, you got some spider plants for $4 each. Um, tree plant bench wraparound. Hmm. That's a good that's that's a good deal right here. Well, good idea, I should say. Um if you have a whole bunch of plants, you could put your plants on this stand around your tree. They get the benefit of growing in a micro environment so the sun is not beating down on them. Uh and you get a additional benefit as when you water the plants on top. Uh, if you put the drain holes over the plants underneath it, you could essentially water once and let that, that water run off to uh, feed the, the other plants so you can conserve water. However, you do have to be careful when you water using that method with a tree. You want to do that on old trees because if you do it on young trees, the uh, roots on the young trees will stop going deep into the earth. They'll just start sending out a bunch of uh, shallow roots. And when you have a big windstorm come through, uh, you can uh, have that tree blow over pretty easy because you've been doing shallow watering. Uh, so in the desert, you want to water deep. Okay. Um, not seeing anything that attracts me, but uh, looks like someone has some plants here for sale. They range from 15 to $25. Uh, a five foot plant. See if we can blow that up. Hmm. Not interesting me. 
Um, nah, has a has a decent looking leaf. I never heard of this this uh, tree plant before. Uh, the plant is five feet tall and already has extra arms already. Okay, looks like someone has a ooh, plant sale. Whole bunch of these things, two dollars each. Oh, this is a grower grower. Bunch of house plants here. And now these these little uh, what do they call those monastera plants? I always see uh, those in modern homes, and those could be pretty pricey as they get older. Um, but yeah, this is a nice deal for someone looking for some uh, plants to add to their situation. Let's see the prices. Uh, $2 and up. Stop by anytime until 6 p.m. She got some good stuff. Uh, let's scroll a little further. I think that's the same person, just a different ad. Here's a Porch of Lacaria Africa. This is what I just recently did a uh, styling on, a bonsai styling. You can turn those into bonsais. Not seeing anything that really, oh. This is a ZZ plant. That's a nice size ZZ plant. I think ZZ plants have to be top five of my favorite uh, non-edible plants. They always just give a great look to uh, any environment that they are in. Uh, here's a cactus. These are pretty expensive cactus. Um, it takes, I think when I took the tour in Sabino Canyon, I think they said it takes like 75 years for a cactus to develop an arm. I believe that's what they say. If it wasn't 75 years, it was like 100 years or something like that. And these cactuses, they uh, send their roots uh, into the ground. You know, this is not that one. But these, these cactuses, as all cactus, they hold uh, lots of water. Lots of water. Oh, that's a fake plant. Uh, I think we talked about this ruta already. I'm not seeing anything. Oh, what's this? Ah, Chiquita bananas. There you go. Um, I got several types of bananas growing in the backyard. But this is a plant that you want to make sure you uh, you take advantage of. Banana plants. They um they produce lots of fruit once they are once they are established, and uh, what they do is they propagate themselves um, by sending out little pups and little shoots, and you let those pups and shoots get a little mature, and then you just take a shovel and you just press down between the mother plant and the uh, daughter plant, and you can take that banana plant and stick it in soil. And uh, it'll continue to grow. Uh, another thing I heard that you can do with banana plants is you don't need to wait for those shoots to come out. I heard that you can do a tissue graft where you can just get the ball of a banana plant. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I um, forgot to leave my finger on the screen. Uh, my phone had locked up on me. Uh, but what I was saying with banana plants, you can do tissue grafts on banana plants where you can, um, if you can get down to the part where the root ball is, is um, located, there's generally this, this massive tissue. And if you cut a piece of that tissue off and you put it in the right medium, they say you can grow bananas that way. They say, in fact, most of the bananas are propagated through tissue grafts and not... Um, you know, by cutting off the uh, pup. Uh, haven't tried that method yet, but uh, that may be something you want to look into. And those are Chiquita bananas. So, you know, that, that banana tree will give you lots and lots of fruit.
Uh, I think we talked about snake plants before in the past. All right, I'm not seeing anything new. So what I'll do is I will uh, go ahead and get out of offer up. Someone selling a plant pot. That'd be pretty cool if you need something. Let's get out of offer up and go over to Facebook Marketplace. Uh, and let's see if there are any plants that we see. Pomegranate. This is in Globe, Arizona. Three pomegranates for five dollars. Uh, I think they're selling the fruit. That's what I take it as. I don't think they're selling the tree. But remember, you can get pomegranates through TEP if you are in Tucson. Um, let's see. Ah, some nice African art there. Are these woods. They are. Not bad. Uh, Monstera plants. We talked about that before. We get into the part of the year where um, Chinese umbrella trees. Uh, I recommend if you can find these trees uh, and you're in Tucson, I wouldn't pay twenty dollars for them. Uh, probably more in the you know uh, five to ten dollar range if you can get them. Get these trees and use them as uh, trees to block the sun. I have two of them in my backyard, and sometimes you don't have enough uh, area in your backyard to put trees under your tree because, you know, to, to get, take advantage of that microclimate that we always talk about. Sometimes you just have too much going on at one time. Uh, get you a Chinese umbrella tree and, um, you know, keep it in a pot. They can take a beating, uh, cut it, <clears throat> excuse me, cut it back every year and uh, allow it to shoot out again. And uh, you can just take that tree and go and put that tree next to uh, any particular, uh, you know, pot, I mean, any, any particular plant or tree that needs some shade. So I kind of use this as a living sun blocker, if you will. So right now I have my loquat tree that I had kind of planted under the canopy of um, a desert willow tree. I cut one of the branches off the desert willow and it, it allowed more sunlight to start hitting my loquat tree. And, you know, we had a horrible hot summer. So my uh, loquat tree started to get some sunburn. So I have a Chinese umbrella tree. Uh adjacent to that loquat tree and it's providing uh shade this is the second year for that loquat tree uh so i'm expecting it to put on a lot of growth uh this winter and the next next year it should be able to handle that that tucson uh heat by itself if not it'll, it'll probably uh die because uh it looks like tucson's just warming up we're getting hotter and hotter every year String of Tears. These make good um, ground covering. You can put these in your pots to protect the uh, the roots from uh, our hot summers. And what happens is they start to, as they start to propagate and expand, they'll kind of hang over your pot. A lot of people have those hanging from um, their patios and, and things of that sort. Someone's selling some pots, make an offer. Uh, pots are always hard to come by, uh, especially big ones. Okay, here's the plant of the week. Purple Liliac Vine. Not particularly familiar with this one. Um, let's see. They give some information. Grows over 10 feet in height. Uh, can be used, uh, has beautiful purple flowers. It can take full sun or partial shade. Doesn't need a lot of water and it's an evergreen and it's hardy into 20 degrees. So if you guys need uh, a shade tree, that sounds like this may be the thing for you. Um, not a bad deal. 
Again, here's a ZZ plant. You just can't go wrong with ZZ plants. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Here's a jade plant. Now, is this in Tucson? This is in California, so I'm assuming, yeah, they're shipping this for $12. You can get this cheaper in your local stores, um, but that is a a tree that can be turned in, a succulent that can be turned into a bonsai. Um, a couple clippings, allow it to grow out, put it in the right pot, and you'll have a good candidate there. I wouldn't, if you have those uh, available, I wouldn't pay for that size. I wouldn't pay more than, I don't know, $12. You can get a big full one for like $25 at um, Mesquite Valley Growers out here in Tucson. Another type of succulent for six dollars. Uh, let's see. Someone has a crystal. This is moss agate. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, let's see. A Chinese money plant, but this looks just like it's not in Tucson. Yeah, the shipping app. I only like to look at stuff that I can uh, pick up. So I'll skim through this, the shippers. Now, there you go right there. I, I just said I was going to skim through the shippers. And here we go. I find the J plant. That's bonsai. Uh, perfect, perfect specimen right there. Uh, it really does not need anything. Maybe just some ramification of the, uh, the uh, pods there. But I mean, you can take that out of a out that pot, put it into the right bonsai soil, put it into a bonsai pot, and you got you a nice tree that's gonna uh, give you a lot of character and um, you know brighten up the space. You know, something like that. You keep right keep that on your desk at work. Here's a bigger jade plant. Uh, again, you can make this jade plant look just like this jade plant with ramification uh let's see moving on moving on golden goddess philodrondrin oh um, that look like a grandma plant but no offense that might be your thing uh, I don't know if these are real plants. Again, this is the shipping. I don't want to look at stuff that ship. Jade plants. Here we go. Um, this guy is selling some jade plants. They appear to be $22 each. Um, uh, I wouldn't pay $22 for those. If I paid $22 for a J plant, I would want something that's a little taller, had a little bit more of a trunk. However, you can you can do some weeping style um, bonsais with that type of uh, J plant that they had. Here's someone selling plumerias. Uh, if you've never smelled a plumeria before, uh, call your local Home Depot, Lowe's, nurseries, wherever. And uh, head down there this weekend to smell plumerias. Um, but they have to be in bloom. You have to see flowers on them. I tell you, it's nothing, nothing is is, is more uh, more pungent, more fragrant than smelling plumerias bloom. You treat these just like you would treat a succulent. I got quite a few. Notice all of these, um, these cuttings. You just stick them in the ground, give them about... 30, 60, maybe even 90 days, depending on what time of year you do it. And uh, you will have um, a plumeria. And I think I'm going to start doing some plumeria cuttings on mine because I got like 16 of them uh, that are mature. And I got shit, maybe 20 of them that are small. It's, it's time to start propagating. This is a night blooming cactus. And I believe this is the one per the name that only blooms at night. Nice, nice uh, specimen. Moringa. Um, many folks refer to this as the, the uh, longevity tree 
of the master tree. Uh, it has lots of benefits, lots of uh, medicinal uses. I think you can eat everything. You can eat the roots, you can eat the bark, you can eat the stems, you can eat the leaves. Everything has a purpose in uh, medicine. Uh, those are $40. I would not pay $40 for a uh, Moringa tree in Arizona. If I'm in other parts of the world, you may consider that. I'm not sure how you, how much access you guys have to Moringa. But in Tucson, you can frequently find these uh, on, on these applications uh, that I mentioned. Offer up Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist for $5, $10. You know, save yourself some money. And with Moringa... If you ever run across someone selling Moringa trees and they have, you know, something that ranges in prices from like $10 to $100, always, always, always buy the $10 of the cheapest plant, the cheapest Moringa you can get because Moringas grow extremely fast. Notice the size of these stems. They're probably the size of a pencil uh, within one year. The, the these tree trunks will be probably in diameter the probably a quarter the size of a quarter in diameter in the following year they'll be the size of a of an orange um maybe even a grapefruit if you feed them well they grow extremely fast i'm thinking about bonsai in one of them uh, i had a couple that i wanted to bonsai but uh just got too busy and um they grew too fast. This is a sponsored ad, but there are some bonsai plants in it. So I just wanted to go look at it. Now, took me into Neverland. They're shipping that jade over there, so I won't go look at it. There we go. Bing, 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 bing. They're shipping these as well, but these are desert roses. Excuse me, desert roses are also in my top five. All of these are gafted, you can tell. You see this, um, if you look in the middle of the plant, you see that flat line. If you look in the middle of all of these, you see a flat line. What happens is they cut those plants right there, and then they take a, uh, a, a desert rose from a different uh, family, and they put the other um, specimen on top of the, cut it, the, the part that's cut off, and then they eventually become one. It's called gafting. And what happens is you get the benefit of having two specimens in one. Certain desert roses are known for providing big uh, cadexes. Those are the part below the cut line, the big thick things that kind of look like uh, sweet potatoes or ginseng roots. Those are known as the cadex. Uh, certain specimens produce big cadexes and certain specimens produce, uh, they flower better. So what they do is they gaff on the, the specimens that flower good with the specimens that have big cadexes and you get a uh, desert rose. I don't, excuse me. I don't particularly like gafted um, desert roses. It takes a while for that gaff line to go away. It eventually will, you won't see it, you know, 10, 15 years down the line, but uh, sometimes depending on a flower, you, you got to go for them, you know. Lots of uh, plumerias available on the market. Um, edible ginger plant. Hmm. They're shipping that, though. Now, if that was local, that would be something I'd be interested in. Trying to build up a, uh, a you know, a, a, a growing medicine cabinet. So you can always have access to things you need. Uh, they're shipping these. I think we kind of exhausted our, ourselves today on offer up. I'm not seeing anything good on uh, Facebook Marketplace either. So let's get out of that. And we will wrap up today by going to uh, Craigslist. Go to for sale, scroll down to farm and garden, and we'll spend a minute or two perusing aloes. I made a aloe 
lemonade um, look at my video aloe is good for hydration everybody knows it can be used topically on the skin but uh, it's also good for hydration also good for uh, making making sure that you digest your food good uh, someone selling some young hens $30 each get you a hen fry you some chicken uh, got some screens over here lemon tree $50 if I didn't have all the lemon trees that I have I would highly recommend someone buying this uh, this tree has fruit on it already it's fifty dollars typically the ones you get at home depot and lowe's they sell them for about 39.99 but you have to wait a year or two for them to produce fruit this one is already fruiting and um this is a palm and this last one looks like a bougainvillea good deal right there that lemon tree will be bought if uh i need lemon trees but i got too many Looks like someone selling some liquid fertilizer. If you're interested in that, please reference this video. Again, some more aloe. Uh, someone has some tropical house plants for sale. Uh, this is a small plant boutique. Look at that. Lots of plants. Let me uh, zoom in so you guys can see. Lots of things. ZZ plants down at the bottom. You're looking for something to do uh, on the weekend. But you know, it's not a lot to do with COVID. Take some time to uh, visit a local, a local nursery. Get out there in nature. And... Um, Look, they even have desert roses over here. Let's see, and their prices are really good. Really, really, really good. I'm um, looking for the desert roses. ZZ plants are $12. Desert roses are six inch for 25. Eh, that's not, not too bad. Um, strawberries and cream arrowhead wine. I'm fine. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about alcohol. Um, I do want to start growing some more varieties of strawberries. I found through Facebook Marketplace, I found a lady that was getting rid of uh, some strawberries that she was growing. And uh, I showed it to my girlfriend. And before I could show it to her, uh, we were dressed and heading in the car to go get them. We dug up probably, I'd say maybe two, three hundred strawberry plants. Um, and we got them outside. The thing with strawberries is, uh, and I'll come to this mother of a thousand hands. Strawberries, you, um, they, the way they propagate is they send out these shooter, these runners as they call them. And those runners, you really should be putting those runners in the ground and allowing them to root so that next season those runners uh, can start fruiting for you. Sometimes they don't fruit immediately. Sometimes they take a season or two. Uh, the problem that we have is we have, we've been lazy and we have not uh, planted anything new. So what happens is strawberries, as, as, as time passes, they still produce fruit, but they don't produce uh abundantly and the quality of the strawberry starts to go down if you want the 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 best the, the best producers and the better tasting fruit you need to take those runners that the plant shoots out plant those and get it from there um not complaining at all because uh all these strawberries were free and we literally can eat off these strawberries until we die if we uh propagate right uh, here's a, a, a succulent plant. This is a mother of a thousand hands. Um, 
these are pretty popular plants in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, palm trees for sale. If you got a pool, that might be something you want to place by the pool to get that look. Um, I think we will go ahead and wrap up this video. Oh, somebody selling koi fish. 15 inches long, asking 100 each. I also have several that are around $10, 10 inches for 60. Many to choose from. Um, that's the goal one day to get a pond. I would rather have a pond over a pool. You could do much more with that pond uh, in terms of your garden, especially if you have fish in it. That water, as the fish release their bowels uh, into that water, that water turns into superfood for your uh, plants. And if you have superfood for your plants, it'll attract nature to you. And a lot of times, people have a pool out here in the desert. And, uh, you know, they dug everything else up and there's no nature around. So you just in this pool in the middle of the desert and you don't have the birds, you don't have the trees. You know, I'm of the thought, I'm of the opinion that uh, everything has to be in balance. You know, you had a pool, you got the trees, you got nature around, you got the birds chirping. You know, that's when it uh, makes sense. It's a Joshua tree. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Not a lot out there today. Um, but the fun thing about, fun thing about this is it can change in any moment. So I think, uh, I'll do five more. That's two. This is three. This is four. And this is five. And I didn't, oh, let's see oleanders. I think we touched on this in a previous video. Oleanders are a good plant um, to have in your yard if you want privacy. They are prolific growers. Uh, they grow very fast. They don't need a lot of water. If you live in a area where you want to, uh, let's say you got, you know, two or three acres of uh, land and it may be cost prohibitive for you to put a fence up. What I would recommend you do is um, you plant oleanders and allow the oleanders to be your fence for you. Uh, to, just to kind of give you some privacy. It's a cheap way to do it. Uh, so I think that's a good point to end here for the day. It's the Black Bonsai Guy. I appreciate you all watching. I'm out. Oh, yeah, make sure you like, uh, comment, and subscribe. And also hit that notification bell so that you know when I uh, release new videos.